بسم الله الحمد لله شروا لا إله إلا الله شروا أن محمد عبد ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد all praises due to Allah we praise Him and we seek His help and refuge I bear witness that there is no God except Allah alone with no partners or associate and Muhammad is His messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم so um, to take advantage of the time I will jump and dive into the topic directly. We want to cover two uh, important concepts in order for us to understand ka'annaka tara. You've heard about ka'annaka tara in Arabic and we're just going to tackle it from a different angle in English, inshallah. The first thing that we need to know that this human being is uh, created from two main parts. Uh, we have to know that there are two parts of the person. One is the physical, the tangible, the touchable, the one that you can touch and see. And the other one is the part that you cannot see, which consists of what? Of the soul. Can you see it? Can you describe it? Can you tell me what it is? You can't. It exists regardless but you cannot um, have it or describe it in a way that I can see it. Everybody believes in it because it's in the body. As long as you have it in the body, you're alive and you can walk, eat, sleep, and just do the, act the daily activity in your life. As soon as this life or this soul departs your body, you're dead. Where does it go? It goes somewhere. We're going to talk about that. How does it go? We don't know except in a certain way. And I will tell you what the major tool is um, when it comes to the things that are unseen. When it comes to unseen world, we'll talk about it inshallah. So, this person was created from mainly. The first time it was created from what? Clay mud that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked Jibreel alayhi salam to go around the world collect some sand or mud from all over the world to create who? Adam alayhi salam and since Jibreel alayhi salam went all over the world to collect the sands or the clay or the mud that's why we have different shapes different heights different thickness different skin colors different eye, eye size, different tiba, uh, different background, different cultures, is because we are from all over the world. That's how Adam alayhi salam was created. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from the mud and clay, it was laid down on the floor for multiple years. It was laid down. Kana juthatan hamida. That was Jibreel, that was Adam alayhi salam. Angels were surprised. They've never seen a creature like that from before. Yes, there were creatures from before, but not the son of Adam or the Ad Adam alayhi salam himself. So they used to look at Adam alayhi salam from a distance and cannot get close to him. Except one. Who used to get close to Adam? Iblis, yes, Iblis. But back then, it wasn't called Iblis yet. Because what does Iblis mean in Arabic wise? Uh, yes, okay, that's in English. Arabic, Iblis, what Iblis? That's what it means. Linguistically, Iblis means that he was been away from uh, Allah's mercy. Whenever you see someone, you call him Iblis, meaning you describe him as Maturud min Rahmatillah. That's what it means. So stop calling each other Iblis, right? Back home in Yemen, we say, Wallah, nak Iblis, because he thought like Iblis is a, is a good description. Ya Shaytan, kayfana. Right? So, uh, Iblis means Maturud min Rahmatillah. So before that, he used to get close. Adam alayhi salam. 
Adam alayhi salam, he was a, a hollow, can, can mugawaf, okay? It, there was nothing inside of his body. It was just a clay and mud. So he used to enter from his mouth and leave from the other part of the body and enter from there and leave from his mouth. And he used to say, Wallahi innaka la da'if. La in sulitta alayya la tahlikanni. Wa la in sulitta alayka la ahlikanni. You're just a weak person or a weak item or a weak thing. If I take a step to destroy you, it will be easy for me and vice versa. If you take that step against me, you will destroy me. Is, is that clear? Now, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command and order the malaika, the angels to make sujood for Adam alayhi salam at that stage? No, not yet. When was the command came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for angels to make sujood at takreem for Adam alayhi salam? When he started moving in this life. فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ As soon as I bring this person to life, you have to make prostration, uh, sujood, sujood takreem, وَلَيْسَ sujood ibada. So everybody made it. So that sujood was for the body or for the soul? It's for the soul. Why? Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted it to be for the body, he could have asked the malaika to make sujood while he was laid down for multiple, multiple years. Some of the narrations, they said 40 years. Now, scientifically, if I bring a human body, Let's say after, after death, because I don't want you to think I'm harsh and I think about torturing people. If you bring a, a human body and break it down into minerals and chemical items and metals, so you separated the iron, you separated the magnesium, the uh, potassium, the what else? The water, the bones, the blood, uh, the water that is in the body, all that. And then you sell it in today's market. So you, you, you brought human beings and you dismantle it. You broke it down into small items and minerals chemically. And you go to the market nowadays and sell it. Do you, do you know how much you cost? $35. If you're mad, I give you $50. I'm, I'm dead serious. That's how much? A physical part for human body cost. Yes, insan al That's how much you cost. Now, let's talk about the soul. You know how much the soul is? Is what you mentioned before. It's priceless. You would never ever be able to pay the amount for that soul. And there is a hadith. Now, which one is, I'll mention the hadith. Which one is more expensive, your soul or the Kaaba? Your soul. No, your soul is, is, is more expensive than the Kaaba. Based on the narration and the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when he said, لَأَن تُهْدَمَ الْكَعْبَ حَجَرًا حَجَرًا أَهْوَنُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ إِرَاقَةِ دَمِ امْرِئٍ مسلم. If you destroy the Kaaba a brick by brick, it's less valuable than killing a person who's a Muslim or shedding his, his blood. That's how much it costs. You see, what, what am I trying to lead you with this introduction is to the unseen world. Unseen world is way more valuable and bigger and wider and more important than the, 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 the thing that you see and you touch. That's why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, described, who can tell me what he described, the two rak'ah of Salat al-Fajr? Not the, not the obligatory, not the mandatory, not the fard, the nafila. What did he say? Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Right? رَكَعَتَيْ الْفَجْرِ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا طَلَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسِ what, what you said is correct. So, رَكَعَتَيْ الْفَجْرِ Why? 
What is so big deal with praying two rak'ah before Fajr? Is better than giving me half of the world or the entire world because there is something called unseen world. Now, as Muslimin, as Mu'mineen, it is extremely important to believe in the unseen world. And it's the first description in the Quran when it comes to Surah Al Baqarah, second surah in the Quran, it says, Alif Lam Mim, Dalik Al Kitabu La Rayba Fihi, Hudan Lil. Muttaqeen. Now we're going to describe al muttaqin Al-Ladheena Yu'minuna bil ghayb. Pause. It was mentioned before even Salah. You have to, you must believe in ghayb in order for you to be successful and to start praying. If person does not believe in, un in the unseen world, I don't think so he's going to be praying. Al-Ladheena Yu'minuna bil ghayb. We believe on the unseen world. So therefore, when we come to people, when we talk to them about the unseen world, and they say, it's unbelievable. Well, you, you cannot believe it. You cannot believe everything that is unseen world. When I describe something in the grave that happened to the dead person, when I describe something in the day of judgment that is going to take place, when I describe something about Iblis and Shaitan and, and, and Malaika, you must believe in it. What is your measure tool? When can you reject it? Because it's so sensitive to believe in the unseen world or not. When do I say, no, I don't believe in it? In, is when I don't have what? A clear what? Clear proof, clear nas, clear hadith, clear ayah. That's the time when I said, no. Because alam al ghayb, alam al ghayb, the unseen world, ضروري يكون عندك يعني دليل قاطع. If you don't have a clear cut answer and and proof for the unseen world, don't talk to me about it because everybody is gonna sleep at night, wake up in the morning, and come up with a story and say, oh, and the day of judgment is gonna happen this and this and that. What's the delete? What's the delete? Because you have to give me a delete about that, otherwise I'm not gonna believe it. Now. What if I have a clear cut dalil on something that is not believable, that I cannot believe it? My mind cannot tolerate it. My, my mind cannot take it. Do I reject it? No, I cannot reject it. Why? Because. Right? I'll, I'll tell you why you cannot use your, your brain the whole time when it comes to the unseen world in a clear cut a hadith and verses, ayat. Now, with your vision, you can see to a certain distance. You cannot see all the way to 15, 20, 30 miles away from here. Let alone when I build a, a, a wall and I tell you what's behind the wall. I don't know. Because I have a certain capacity and potential when it comes to looking or seeing something. That's with the vision. Now with the hair. If I bring you to a place where it's too loud, you, you might get hurt. Your brain might get hurt. Your ears might get hurt. You have to step away from that loud voices. At the same time, if I talk too low, you just see my lips moving up and down, you will not be able to hear me. So again, you have a certain potential capacity. You have a certain strength when it comes to hearing. And when it comes to seeing, the same exact way, are you focusing with me? The same exact way with your mind, with your brain. You, you cannot comprehend everything. If, if you try to comprehend everything, you're leading yourself to craziness. You, you want to be crazy one day. If you want to understand every and comprehend everything, then you have to hear everything and you have to see everything. Imagine you just can hear just like a dog, just like a dog, no more than that. Will you be able to sleep? You can because they hear very small things like very quiet things they hear. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, gives you a, a little bit of his strength more than normal with your vision, you start seeing ghosts, you start seeing malaika. You know, there are a lot of malaika around us right now. Imagine you can see them. 
And when you go home and your dad is shouting and yelling and hitting everybody at home, there is a lot of jinn and shayatin in the house. Imagine the moment you open the door, you can see them all over, spread all over the, the, the place. You can't live peacefully. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a certain uh, strength and capacity where you can see here, same thing with your mind. So, you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Him. So, that way you will worship Him and you will be scared and you will be afraid and you will love Him and you will do everything as if that God is in front of you. So, we, that's why we have to believe in all these things. Now, when it comes to, for example, <clears throat> shaitan. You know, uh, uh, in, in, in the ahadith, they say, Shaytan yajri bibn Adam majrad dam. What does that mean? Translate it for me. That the shaitan is, runs in the stream of your blood. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense when you hear it for the first time. But he's there. He is there. I give you another hadith about the shaitan. You reminded me of it because I know you hear it most of the time. What is the hadith that talks about the shaitan? What does he do uh, when it comes to early Salat al Fajr? Explain it to me. What does he do? Hadith, hadith. Thalath uqad. He what? He ties three knots on the back of. Your head, right? Okay? And then when you wake up and you say, You release or you open one knot. And then when you make wudu, you release or you open the second knot. And then when you pray, you release the third knot. And then تصبح الصباح وأنت نشيد. You become like energetic, jazzed up, happy, smiling, jumping, like bouncing like a puppy, that's what, what happened to you in the morning. Okay, what if you don't wake up? يصبح الإنسان إيش؟ كسلان خبيث النفس. You're you're cranky. You're you look at you. you it was like you drive in the morning. You, you don't even want to drive. You don't want to even go to work or school. واحد يقول لك هاي يقول لك what do you want? You don't even say hi back to him. It, Okay, so where is the shaitan in the equation? It's in, it's in you. Now, if I take you to the best medical center in the world, that they have the most updated medical devices and machines, and I ask them to detect the shaitan in your body or in your blood, will they be able to see it? No, that's the unseen world. That's the unseen world. That's the world that you have to deal with every day without you being able to see it. That's why you have to deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Him. If you believe in all these things that I just described and talked to you about, let alone believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's Al-Iman bil ghaybiyat You have to believe on the unseen world. There are multiple and multiple occasions and, and, and situations that sometimes we just don't understand it, but it exists as there the whole time. Uh, how, how many, I have 20 minutes, right? Dr. Muhammad, Dr. 20 minutes? What I can buy? Allow us? Okay. I don't have the breaks. I don't have the breaks. As I'm, a, I'm a teacher. <laughs> okay, so now we agreed on what's going on on the unseen world, um, on the shaitan, what does he do, how to treat with it, how, 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 how he treat it, and how he uh, uh, work, works against us. And that's how we need to work with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we see him, as we uh, deal with him uh, uh, in person, face to face. So, uh, the, the second thing that I want you to realize or, or comprehend or bring it to your intention, attention is uh, w when you are here, you don't work in the body. You work in the soul. Now, you got the two parts. We agreed on that. 
So sometimes, not sometimes, uh, most of the times, when you play digital games, uh, Fortnite, PlayStation, on the phone, call it whatever you want to call it, okay? Whatever you want to call it. Good? You, you with me? Because you start, I started, I started losing you a little bit. So get your thoughts together, please, and, and stay with me. I only have nine minutes left, and then I'll, I'll, I'll leave. Promise. So when you, when you play those electronic games, sometimes you forget that you're thirsty or hungry. And then when you're, one of your parents tell you, Ya Muhammad Saleh Ali Infanna, time to sleep. Then when they shut the Wi-Fi down, when they turn it off, you start focusing on your body. Then you realize that you're thirsty and hungry. And you start telling your mom, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going You've been in front of the screen for six, seven hours. Maybe I'm exaggerating. For a few hours. Well, sometimes some people I know in person, they stay six, seven hours with no problem. You, 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 you stood up in front of the, or you stood, uh, in, uh, stood in front of the screen for three, four hours, uh, and, and you don't know that you're thirsty or hungry. I, I, um, we had one of the issues with one of the uh, little ones, second grader. When he plays, he doesn't hold himself, he, he, and he doesn't go to a uh, restaurant. So he pees the, like, like, he doesn't want to go, and he cannot hold himself. Wallah I'm serious. We used to have a problem with one of those second graders. You, you see how it is? Okay, why? Why? Because once your soul works, the body never gets tired. I want you to realize that. That's why people in, in Salah, when the Imam prolongs the recitation or the ruku' or the sujood a little bit more than average, they start huffing and puffing and they start getting mad and they start shouting and yelling and, and go, why? And then when the Imam makes it short, you see them standing there for half an hour. What? It's a conflict. You, you were mad at me because I, I prolonged the salah two minutes. Usually we pray six to eight minutes. And, and I, I, I prayed 10 minutes and you were so mad. And when I made it short, you stood up there talking for half an hour. Sometimes I leave outside and I see people stand there talking for half an hour. For one hour. Why? Because that's the soul is working at that time, not the body. That's exactly the same with you. If you play in a digital game, an electronic game right now, you would stay like an idol. You would stay for three, four hours without saying anything. But because there is a disconnection between the body and the soul, the body gets tired quickly. That's why when you go to mall, you walk for three, four hours straight, you never get tired. Because the soul is the one who is walking, not you. The soul who is pushing the body to do the work, not you. That's why when you go to sleep and you are about to fall asleep, then you heard news that it's really, really good or really, really bad. You cannot sleep anymore. What happened to the sleep? You're about to fall asleep. It's gone because the soul doesn't want to sleep anymore. So the body reacts to the soul. So I want you to realize that very carefully because when you love something, you never get tired of doing it. And that's the unseen world. That's when you deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do I do? I get tired quickly when I, when I pray. You have to work on it. You have to strive. You have to fight the shaitan. It is not going to come to you naturally because you're fighting for paradise. You're working for Jannah. It's not, it's not cheap. 
You know, when there is something really expensive, you have to work hard for it. That's, that's the deal. If the Jannah is so easy, then everybody would have gone to Jannah easily. But the Jannah is not easy initially. If you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it, you work a little bit hard, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take you to it. Is that clear? Now, which one is easy? Working for the body or working for the soul? For the body. The body is so easy to work for. And what do you work for the body? What do you do for it? You eat, you drink, you uh, go and you build it in the gym, you have fun, you go to beach. Yeah, this is all for the body. But for the soul, you do istighfar, you pray, you recite more Quran, you give charity and donation, you obey your parents, you do all that, that's for the soul. So that's why some people, when they get, when they're frustrated, when they're depressed, they said, oh, I'm depressed, let's go to beach. Habibi, no, it doesn't work like that. It's, it's, depression is not coming from the body. Depression is coming from the soul. Frustration is coming from the soul. That being tired is, is coming from the soul. How do you go to beach to work for the soul? It doesn't work. That's why there is a conflict. There is a, a disconnection between the body and the soul. And during this life, during this life, your soul will follow your body. Your soul will follow your body. Once you die, what's happening? Uh, 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 okay, and who's follow who's who? The body follows the soul. Let me repeat that. It was confusing for a second. Listen, in this life, the soul follows the body. Wherever you go, your soul follows you. And when you die, the body follows. That's why we take you there. Graveyard. Because your soul is there. Are you going to tell me, well, what if I was drawn or, or they called me somebody? It doesn't matter. Your body is going to follow the soul later on. That's why you're not or you don't belong to this life anymore when you die. Because you have to follow your soul. So that's what uh, we have to be careful with. Watch out. Um, work on. I want you to differentiate between, to make a difference between the body and the soul when to work for the body and when to work for the soul. And again, the soul doesn't get old. The soul stays the same. Your body that gets old. The soul stays the same and it goes from a stage to a stage. But the last two minutes, I'm gonna tell you the stages of the soul. It goes through five stages. You are here in the third stage. There are two before and there are two after. You're right here in the middle of the stage. So the first stage of the soul was when? That what? huh? Okay, listen. There is a, a, a verse in Surah Al-A'raf where it says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to us. قَالُوا بَلَىٰ and taqulu yawm al qiyamah inna kunna an hadha ghafilin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking to us when fi alam al dhar that was way before before he that he created the earth and the sky before he created the universe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking or during or while he was creating the universe or right after he created the universe he was talking to us that was the first stage so we existed back then that, that was before. That's the first stage. Then the second stage, That's when our parents got married and we were in dad's aslab in the lower back and mom's womb. That's the second time when you stayed there for seven to eight to nine months. Then when you came to this life, it's the third stage. Then when you go to the graveyard, is the fourth stage. Then when you are resurrected in the day of judgment, that's the fifth stage. And the soul goes from one to one. The soul doesn't die. 
The soul is permanent. It stays there for good. Once Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the idhn, the permission for you to exist, you've already been existed since then. So you're just going from stage to stage. Okay, so what happened? It's just the body changes. You're a baby, then you become young, then younger, then older, then older, then older, then you die, then the soul leaves from a stage to another, it goes there, comes back here, and then in the day of judgment, you're not gonna get the same body. It will change in the day of judgment. You will be, uh, uh, you will be customized. So you will be able to tolerate what's going on in the day of judgment. So that only the body changes, but the soul stays at, as it is. Work on it. That's, that's your treasure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yaghfir al dunub wa yukafir anna sayyat. And I'm sorry, I took one minute extra. Zakumullah khair sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.